Good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining us uh, for Ada Sigma Phi meeting tonight. Uh, for those who may not know, Ada Sigma Phi is a national honor society for classical studies, and our chapter here at the University of Iowa also serves as an open membership classics club uh, for any students with an interest in studying or discussing the ancient world. Uh, for a meeting tonight, Dr. Trusty has kindly agreed to give us a virtual tour of the Acropolis Museum in Athens. So let her take that away. Hello, and thank you, Hannah. I'm very excited to um, show you all my favorite museum in the whole world. You should all be able to see my screen right now. Um, but just a little bit of history about this museum, which you see here with all this glass. If it looks new, it's because it relatively is new. Um, it, it was built in 2010. So it is 10 years old, um, 11, almost 11 years old. Um, I was fortunate enough to be living in Greece when it was opened. Um, and so I got to see it early on and I get to come back every year. Uh, last year, they opened up this area down here, which was already excavated and visible and everything, but it is a much a, a later um, area. It's, um, it's Byzantine up to uh, 1700 CE, common era. Um, and it is the previous um, inhabitants. You can see there's all these like wells and cisterns down here and lots of tourists like to throw coins down there. And so there's lots of money to be had down there now for, our, for all the archeologists to pick up every year. Um, now, as I'm going through this tour, if you would like to ask questions, you definitely can. You can unmute yourself and uh, ask, or you can put them in chat. I'm looking at chat too. Um, or you can raise your hand. There's a reactions button. Um, or reactions option, and you should be able to see things like raise hand if you just wanna wait for me to call on you. But otherwise, I'm perfectly fine with having a conversation through all of this as well. Um, so obviously we're not there, <laughs> but if we were there, you can't see it, but that's the Acropolis up there, right up there. Um, you can kind of see the corner of the east side of it. So the Acropolis is technically within view, except that this building is right in the way. But don't worry, we'll see a very good view from up here when we are up here. But when they were constructing this building uh, in the 2000s, um, one of the issues that they came across was of course the previous archeology. span And so how do you incorporate or preserve the previous buildings that were underneath these modern buildings that they had torn down. So they tore down the modern buildings and then they excavated to put in the supports and they found all of this, um, which is not surprising <laughs> to say the least. Um, but what is great is that in 2009, 2020, it was right around 2020, they opened up this bottom area and now tourists can actually go down to this bottom area, um, which is really exciting. You can walk around and tour that down there and see what um, anything, it's, you know, 300-ish years old uh, to 500 years-ish old down at the bottom. Um, and they're just domestic houses and things, but they would have had a beautiful view of the Acropolis, honestly. All right, so as you're going in, we'll go in uh, here and look around, but you go in these main doors, security, yada, yada, yada. There's a really great, um, uh, gift shop, of course, there's two gift shops that are great, but I'm going to fast forward us to, here we go, the entryway. And so here we are at the entrance. You come through these turnstiles. Now, one thing this doesn't show you that I would love to show you, if I can find it, um, is that there is a section right there, right up front here, that actually has the Legos, <laughs> the Legos of the Acropolis, and I'm trying to find it, and of course I can't find it. Oh, there it is. Okay. So here we go. This is from when I took students in 2019. They have a cool Lego uh, recreation of it. So there's the Athena Parthenos statue within the Parthenon. 
Uh, they, let's see what else they have. So they have the uh, theater of Dionysus down here and then the Propylia coming in and all of that fun stuff. Even got the Caryactids, which is behind me and also behind Hannah. Um, so lots of very cool stuff uh, there that they've put in and I appreciate Legos. So I thought I would share that much with you. Um, but as you go in through this area, they do a very nice, on the right hand side, a very nice view of all of the pottery, well not all the pottery, but a chronological evolution of the pottery. So we start from early on in the Bronze Age and then go through to the classical period, Hellenistic and Roman. Um, so you get a nice view there. Unfortunately, this is a terrible uh, quality, but um, it does have some really, really, really great stuff. Um, rather than show you all of that stuff though, let's um, go to this other side. Now this other side has a lot of the um, pottery as well, but then it also has offerings that were left to Asclepius um, and other gods uh, because Asclepius, the god of healing has um, and medicine has a sanctuary on the Acro or in one of the sections of the Acropolis. There's a little cave that is devoted to him. Um, and so we have lots of votive offerings to him as a result. Um, looking to see if there's questions. I don't see questions, so I'm gonna keep going. All right, so let's hit play. So yeah, we get to like walk through, which is kind of cool. One thing you might notice is if you look down, those are glass floors. So you can actually see all the way down to uh, the archeology span that is down there. Um, but that's an issue if you are female and wearing a skirt. And so whenever I bring students to the Acropolis Museum or whenever I go myself, I make sure to tell people not to wear a skirt because if you look, well, I'll show you, I'll, if you look up too, you're gonna see up and up also has glass floors. All right, so of course it's right there. People are walking up there. <laughs> so, um, but this area is the area that I was talking about that has the um, objects to Asclepius and also has other things. So this right here is a cool little like bank or treasury or um, place where people would leave coins and money for um, the sanctuary on the Acropolis and it still had some coins in it. Um, so they actually preserved it as a sort of like, oh, look, this is kind of like a wishing well in antiquity or a way of funding maintenance on the Acropolis. Um, but one of my favorite things is something that is unusually not like here, which is weird. So I wonder if they moved it because of COVID or when this video was made. One of my favorite things is right here-ish. Um, and it is a... Um, object devoted to, and I'm never going to find it now, of course, but it's an object that was left to Asclepius to thank him for um, giving sight or healing the eyes of a person. And I'm going to try and find it. Um, I'm never able, there it is. It's super creepy. I know Hannah's seen it. Um, it is this guy here, maybe. Well, we're gonna go to a Twitter page apparently. It is this guy. Um, yeah, super creepy eyes. Uh, if you look at a larger one, it looks like this. So there was a stone where people had left um, bank offerings to Asclepius. And so all of these niches would have been filled with these votive offerings. They only put one there and it's like the creepiest one, <laughs> but there it is. Nevertheless, um, I think it's a beautiful representation of the thank offering for someone, he for Asclepius healing this person's eyes. Um, I think it's a really, really cool one. And you can see the paint still on it as well, which is very nice. Um, but we'll get to some other things as well in just a little bit. 
but for some reason, not in this, and it's one of my favorite things that they show. So as you're going in then, and this is just the first floor, uh, you're gonna go up these stairs, and the first thing you're gonna see is, of course, um, this guy here. So let's go ahead and proceed through. See, it's right there. It's right there. <laughs> There's the back of it, and they like disappeared with it. So very sad that you can't see it in its you know cool little rotation, but here are all the other offerings that were for Asclepius that were found on the Acropolis. Now, if I look back, here's the other great thing. If I look back, here are the Caryactids. The Caryactid statues are um, the columned uh, women. They're holding up, you can see in the back of Hannah's uh, background, actually. Those are recreations that were put in many, 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 many years ago um, to protect the originals. Now you'll notice behind me even, one, two, three, four, five, there's only five. When there are one, two, three, four, five, six in Hannah's, the sixth one is at the British Museum in London. And there is a very moving children's book that you can buy at the Acropolis Museum about the lost Caryactid statue, Carrie, and her quest to come home. Um, so very cute and adorable and sad and heartbreaking at the very same time. So Elgin, Lord Elgin had taken one um, away with him and it is in the Acropolis, or it is in the British Museum alone by itself today. All right, you can see the glass. There's no people walking on it, but you would normally. So let's keep going. Wonderful statues over here. But here we are now in front of the pedimental sculptures for the Bluebeard Temple. The Bluebeard Temple um, is, uh, was built on the Acropolis um, around the time of the tyrant Pisistratus um, and then was torn down later. Um, and the uh, statues, these pedimental statues were actually buried on top of the Acropolis because they were sacred, seen as sacred to Athena and so should not leave the Acropolis. Um, and so they were buried and that's why they're in such a great state of preservation for us. But this is the Bluebeard Temple. Um, it is a temple to um, Athena. And so you're probably wondering like, why would I ever call this the Bluebeard Temple? That's a very weird name. And it's because of these guys here. There are three guys, they share a snaky body. There are three of them. And they have beards, which are blue. And so we call it the Bluebeard Temple as a result, but this is not to pirates or anything like that. This is um, an interesting temple that has scenes that we're not totally sure about, but in the center is this wonderful two lions, not well-preserved, but two lions killing a bull. Um, and then on this side, this appears to be Heracles wrestling um, maybe Nereus or Triton. Um, he wrestles both of them at po different points. Um, so it, we do know it's a snaky creature. So it's probably a sea god of some sort. So Triton or Nereus both fit here. Um, but over here then to complement the sort of snakiness going on here, we have this three headed creature with a snaky body and the guys are each holding something. One is holding shafts of wheat. One is holding what could be lightning or maybe a or a rainstorm or something like that. And the other seems to be holding something that could be represented as winds. Um, and so each of these then kind of maybe signifies either some sort of natural element or the argument also is that these show the three divisions of Athens, the men of the hills, the men of the um, of the coast and the men of the city. Um, that's up for debate, but this does seem to be built during the time of Pisistratus and he was a member of the men of the hills who were farmers. And so that would be represented with the wheat, whereas the wind would probably be the coast and then the, uh, the lightning or other things could be the city perhaps. Um, now, as we turn from this building, built by the way around the fifth century, four, sixth to fifth century, fifth, sixth to fifth century, yeah, uh, BCE. 
we then go in and we see more um, things. I'm pretty sure it'll let me go this way, but we'll see. But we'll get a nice close up of these guys. I love this one because they're so well painted and it's still preserved. You even see like drips of blood off of the bowl. Um, but then you come in onto this side and here are more pedimental sculptures um, that we only have fragments of. An, a lioness attacking a bull in a similar theme as the one over here that you saw. Um, this one goes to a different temple, however. Um, additionally, we have this cool little snaky guy that probably fit in the corner of a smaller temple. Um, these are all much earlier um, than the Parthenon. Um, and you can tell that from the style, right? The hair, the mane of the uh, animal and the, the style of the bull all signify that it's a little earlier than that. Um, but then we come in here to the area of the Acropolis that is devoted to the sculptures that were dedicated on the Acropolis. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll go that way. There we go. And this is stunning. I love this area. You cannot take photos here. Um, what's been really frustrating for me is that you could take photos of this at these other areas, um, which I have photos of, but then as soon as you turn the corner, no photos, no photos are allowed at all. Um, and you have to be careful too, because these are set up in a way that almost begs you to knock them over. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it feels a little treacherous. Whoa, I did not do that. It did that on its own. It feels a little treacherous, um, but they do have some really amazing statues here. And as we go through, maybe, let's see, let's go over here. Can I go over here? Nope, I can't, all right. So as we go to these different places, you can see these statues. All of these would have been left on the Acropolis as um, gifts to Athena and the other gods. But you can see there were writers. This one is a really fascinating one because it depicts um, a Persian writer who has Persian um, lanes on. Um, but we also have big monumental guys like this guy. And then over here, and we'll see if it lets us. Did you see an owl sculpture? Yes, that was way back, wasn't it? Sorry, Jeremy. Yes, there was an owl sculpture further back um, with Asclepius. I don't think there's one here. Most of these are writers. Um, and Koray statues. So all the women represented here are the Koray statues. And what they don't give you a great view of is this guy right here. This guy right here is the Moscophoros. Um, and I have a photo of, there's one of the Moscophoros um, guys. I should have an image of him. There's another one in the uh, National Museum. So the one in the National Museum looks like this guy. Nope, this guy. Um, that's the one in the National Museum. There's another one. You can see it right there. He's like holding it just like the others. Um, this is, uh, these are unique and interesting because they not just have the male, but they also have a cow with them. Um, but the same tradition stands with all Koros statues where it's a male, right? He's facing forward, usually has his hands down at his hips, very Egyptian-like, right? Um, with one foot stepping forward. Um, so all of the, the male statues that are like this, shown full nudity usually, um, are still painted um, in antiquity, but we don't have those paint. A lot of them are not painted today either because it did not preserve or because people decided to scrub them. Um, either way, however, um, these are really fascinating. As far as the um, Koroi statue, Koroi statues, um, they are much better preserved. Um, and so I'm just gonna show you a few from probably, let's do them. Yeah. So here are just a few. Um, these are in the National Museum, but you can see reconstructions of the paint 
and what they would have looked like. Um, so here is like an original versus the painted version. Um, these are actually, this is a mold, um, but the original of this one is actually in the Acropolis Museum. Um, and you can see, this is the National Museum, you can see the red on these. Notice how the female in these is stagnant, that she's holding still, right? She, she's standing straight as opposed to the males who have one foot forward. Um, and then for this one, especially, which is again in the Acropolis Museum, um, it has a socket right here actually, because her hand would have been extended out and added separately and, hand, and her hand holding out, usually they're holding something like a pomegranate. Um, and so we call these Kore statue, statues because um, holding the pomegranate, Persephone is another character that's off, another mythological character that's often called Kore, um, which just means girl. Uh, but because of that symbolism with um, Persephone and the pomegranate, you can see right here, right, with this one, um, how we would think that they're images of Persephone rather than anyone else. All right, but let's proceed. Maybe we can go a little bit further. Maybe. There we go. Because I want to show you this one right here before it zaps us away. So this right here, you notice they might be in a triangle of some sort. These are from the old temple of Athena that was destroyed when the Persians sacked um, Athens in 480 BCE. Um, the Persians invade Athens after the Battle of Thermopylae. It's their second attempt to get into Greece. They invade Athens after the Battle of Thermopylae um, and successfully take over um, the city, they go up to the Acropolis and destroy everything, including one complete temple. We call it the old temple to Athena um, and a temple that was in the process of being built, but was not yet complete. It was going to be a Parthenon, um, but it had not yet been completed. But the columns were up, it was ready to go, but they destroyed um, it. Um, and so we call that one the Old Parthenon, even though it was never finished. So you can tell lots of confusion with names in this because we have like the Hecatompodon, and sometimes we call that one the Old Bluebeard, the Bluebeard Temple as well. But then we have the Old Parthenon, and we have the Old Temple to Athena. And you can see how this gets really complicated for figuring out like how many temples were there, really? And we still have a lot of difficulty figuring out the archeology span of this area because the Acropolis was built over so many times um, from the Mycenaean period, which was 1600 BCE on, um, there was always something on top of the Acropolis. And so that successive rebuilding means that people have to destroy whatever was there, platform everything a little bit, terrace some more, and then build more. And so that constant destruction of layers uh, results in a lot of complications for archeologists. But this building was the one that was destroyed by the Persians, um, the old temple to Athena. And you can see here is Athena. What this scene shows, this pedimental scene shows is um, a gigantomachy or a, a battle against the giants. And so the giants are, um, creatures that were sent up by Gaia herself um, in order to um, challenge the, the gods, specifically Zeus. But Zeus gets all of his siblings and his offspring to help out. And so we know that the Acropolis, or that this one had Athena here. And then in the middle here was actually a chariot group. Let's see if I can find that before too long. Um, a chariot group that had um let's go to my city of athens class we just learned about this in city of athens which is one of the classes i teach here at the university of iowa um normally i bring students with me but let's get to that okay hold on so do, 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 do. here we go so this is the remains of the old temple to Athena that was destroyed. And here is 
that gigantomachy scene that you see. So here's that Athena, right? And it's interesting because they put her over here in the museum. Um, we don't have any of this, but um, we have little bits and pieces that suggest that it's got Zeus in the chariot and Heracles right next to him shooting all of these um, uh, giants. What's great about this too is that we know it's Heracles because he's got his, his little lion skin um, with him. But uh, so that's one thing that's going on here with this old temple to Athena. And so I wanted to show what that looks like in its entirety as well. Let's keep going though. How do they seismically protect? Yes. So all of this um, is very secure. Thank you, Dan, for that question. Oh, we're going to jump here now. Um, so thank you, Dan, for that question. Yeah, a lot of this is um, built with some of the best methods um, for protecting from earthquakes, especially the foundations. Um, but for a lot of this, they're very well anchored. Um, and so from what I've been able to tell that whenever they have an earthquake in the past 10 years, they've had earthquakes and not much has fallen. The things that tend to fall are the smaller things that they didn't secure well enough and small things, but the, they're pretty much aware that these are going to get bumped potentially even by tourists who are absentmindedly like walking around. So they're pretty secure as a result. Um, now here is here is a close up of those caryatid statues that you can see here. Um, one of the fascinating things, so here's where the fifth one or the sixth one should go, but is in the Partha or is in the British Museum. One of the things is when they constructed this building, they wanted it to be um, a testament to the fact that Greece is ready to take these monuments, these objects back from London, and so they deliberately have a space left. And when we go up to the top floor, you'll see they deliberately have um, placed things as like, here's the mold and here's a piece of it that belongs in this mold and is not here because it, and is gone because, you know, we, it's missing. It's at the British Museum. Um, now yours, actually, I think they were doing this up till recently. They've been cleaning these caryatid statues as a result of the pollution of being out in the elements for some time until they brought them in in the 90s, I believe, um, or 80s, they brought them in. They were just covered with pollution, with buildup over the thousands of years. And so they actually used infrared lasers, it was very cool, to uh, clean these and make these a little bit um, more presentable. Um, and so sometimes you would come in and one of them would be draped in a protective uh, barrier and you'd hear this zapping noise that was like Zzzz. and you would see a video here, a live video of them cleaning it. So it was kind of cool to see this very slow process of going line by line by line by line by line cleaning uh, these statues. Um, but they are fascinating, um, as you can tell. Uh, let's keep going. It's really great to be this close to these as well. Um, if you ever went to the old museum, the old museum is on top of the Acropolis. And today they just use it for the bathrooms, but it is incredibly small. Um, and really like, honestly, you couldn't fit much in there. This has to be at least, I'd say 20 to 30 times larger than what was the space available on top of the Acropolis, which is nil because it's the Acropolis. There's so much stuff up there. So now they use that for buildings and for guards and everything. You can kind of see right here, the Acropolis, which is great. Um, we have now left. So around this corner in the escalators is where all of those statues were standing, the big like fall risk statues. Um, oh, how tall are the uh, caryatids? The caryatids are larger than life size. Um, so they're about six feet, six to seven feet in, in height. Um, and each one is different too. I love that each one is different. Um, the, even the hairstyles of each of the women is different. So they're, 
they got these braids going back that are just gorgeous. I love this museum. I honestly cannot uh, wait to go back. It's going to be way too long to wait. Let's see if I can find some of my stats. Yeah, okay, so here's some caryatid statues, some pictures. You can see how close these people can get, which always makes me nervous, but whatever. Um, and you can see all of this here. A nice socket for her arm that would have been seated right here and then holding her. Uh, yeah, I, I love that you can walk around these. They're just fabulous. Um, yeah, there's the hairstyles. I love these hairstyles. They're just gorgeous. Each one is a little bit different. They're very unique. Um, so this is what part of the um, why? Oh, why the caryactid? I actually don't know. Marsha, do you know why the caryactid is in such bad shape? Is it because of the cleaning? Um, my understanding is that um, Lord Elgin um, wanted that one first, had somebody start to pry it out and made a huge mess of it and it broke to pieces. And so he just left it and then he took the other one. And that's why it's in such beautiful shape in the British Museum. Of course. Thank <laughs> you. I did not know that. This one right here. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That sounds about right. Honestly. Um, there's a lot of debates about caryatids uh, or about Elgin and his methods. Um, one thing that I didn't realize until later was even that when he took his, when he took everything, put it on a ship and sailed away, that ship then sank. It sank, it was called the Mentor, which is even more insulting, um, but it sank off of the coast of Kithara um, and they, he spent even more money getting all of the stuff back up. We're still excavating that shipwreck today um, and have found many interesting things, including chess pieces from the people that were um, inhabitants of the ship. So interesting stuff, really, really frustrating, however, that it had to be put into the ocean even and then brought back up and then brought to London. So the Greeks, of course, didn't um, want this stuff to leave, but Greece was not under Greek control at the time when it happened in 1801. Um, instead, the Turks were in charge. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, Greek didn't, Greece didn't get their freedom until 1820s, 1830s. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really frustrating, like, yeah. It's a frustrating everything. There have been more calls to return all of these monuments that Elgin took. Um, there have been calls since Brexit, especially. With Brexit coming up, with Brexit happening, um, the EU wanted to say like, well, then if you're not part of the EU anymore, then give us back the stuff. So yet another attempt, um, nothing, unfortunately, Hopefully these people help provide some scale for you guys. They're just over life size, slightly over life size. I just love the hair. So I kept taking pictures of the hair. Um, curly haired people, we gotta stick together. All right. So that the, the caryactids and the, the building that is behind uh, Hannah is the Erechtheon. And the Erechtheon is a weird building. Uh, it has three porches weird it has multiple levels weird it has several shrines in it from what we can tell weird it doesn't follow the normal temple structure at all weird and it has a ton of mythology associated with it additionally this is supposedly where some sacred snakes were kept um and they had to feed them honey cakes apparently that were left to um, them, that were left to the snakes. So the snakes were eating honey cakes, which I don't think so. I think they were eating the bee, the animals that were eating the, the honey cakes, but whatever. Um, this area also has a lot of mythology tied to it. It apparently has 
marks where Poseidon struck down and killed Erechtheus, one of the kings of Athens. So it has marks in the bedrock from that. Um, it has Athena's um, uh, olive tree uh, that she planted. There is an olive tree there today. Um, however, it is not the same one. Let me find my students. I'm going to show my students. Sorry, Hannah. Here we all are in front of the, uh, here's the caryatches. You can see that right there. Here's the, uh, the tree that is there um, dedicated to Athena now, but it was planted by the American School um, of Classical Studies in Athens um, as a way of, of bringing back what was supposedly supposed to be here. So yay, Americans. I miss these guys. That was such a fun day. Um, now all this other stuff that is here is, um, and now here as well, are lots of parts of um, the other buildings besides the Parthenon. The Parthenon's upstairs. How much time do I have? Wow, I'm gonna have to like zoom through the rest of this and that's really sad. Uh, but the these buildings are things like the, uh, that's creepy that that person's just walking. There we go. So we have um, the balustrade, which is right next to, which surrounded the um, Athena Nike temple, the temple to Athena Nike. Um, this was on the bastion. So as you come up the Acropolis, you see the Athena Nike statue on your right, or the Athena Nike, sorry, temple on your right. Um, beautiful, wonderful. And I'm gonna find another picture maybe, but probably not. Um, Sorry, let's get to Sorry, I got it, I got it, I swear. Paraclean building program. All right. So all right, here we go. So here is the temple to Athena Nike. And this was surrounded by a balustrade, which you can see here that depicted Nike's statue or uh, victory goddesses, goddesses of victory, hence why Nike has the symbol Nike, right? It's because of these goddesses of victory, Nike. So they are all through here. The most famous one depicts her holding or, yeah, this is all gonna be to someone else, so never mind. Um, but the most famous one has her as the sandal binder, and I don't see it, it must be on the other side, where she is is fixing her sandal um, in a very like cute and angelic way, in a way. But lots of Nikes doing different things, different activities. Um, on the other side, oops, sorry, pause, 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 pause. All right, so here's where you can start to get a view of the Parthenon from outside. Um, but then you get into, we're starting to get into the Hellenistic and Roman period stuff now at this point. And so we see lots of more dedications, but they're a little bit later to Athena. And then this thing right here, hidden here, is a beautiful um, image of probably Athena. It's from the Acropolis Museum. But I don't know if you guys saw this on Twitter and everything. The... Um, someone went through and made it made a virtual uh image of or they can make your they can digitize family photos and make them move right and so one of my friends flint dibble uh creepily put in that statue and so here is that statue moving, which I find even more creepy now, but this is a great one. It's a head of Athena um, and uh, the paint dripping down or the dripping down is coming from the um, her eyes. So it's not intentional, um, but there's the eyes had pigment and stuff in them that then ran down. But of course they do this like really creepy thing and there's a lot of really interesting ones that he had digitized, like Alexander here, which is weird to have him like blinking at us. Some Fayum painting. Yeah. So anyways, uh, very creepy stuff. 
Um, I just had to share that one. But I I love this one because it looks like it's crying. It yeah, it's a great statue. But then you go through here and you can see lots of other uh, statues throughout that are from the Hellenistic period and on. Um, we even have a couple of Roman emperors. Oops. Okay. So now we're going to go on to the top floor, I guess. <laughs> so let's go to the top floor. And the top floor of um, the Acropolis Museum, you can see they arranged it even. If you ever look at a, um, a bird's eye view of this building, they actually have it so that it's, it's the top floor is a different angle than the other floors below it because they want it to be parallel to the Acropolis. So I find this really fascinating. Um, this is pretty much a life-size version as well, but they've like taken away the columns because the columns are on the Acropolis. They just kept the art part. Um, so they shortened everything. So what would traditionally, you know, be a whole temple, you're walking around it as if it is full size, but they've, you know, put the pedimental sculptures that would be up top, they put them lower so that you can view them lower. The, um, what would be the acroteria, the top of the temple um, is here. And these are beautiful papyrus um, and lotus flower patterns that are just gorgeous. And then the metopes up here depict different scenes. And then of course the interior frieze, uh, oops, sorry the interior frieze as well. So let's look at some of this stuff. Let's look at, so well, we'll have them. No, I'm going to start with the Parthenon itself. Hannah knows that I could talk about the Parthenon for hours and hours and hours. I won't, I'll save you guys on that one, but I do want to show you some like diagrams of the, the um, artwork. So we have, uh, so here is the Parthenon plan, right? This is um, as it is, it, this is the west side of it. Um, and this is the east side. All temples open up to the east um, in their main room will face the east so that the sun shining in can shine in on the statue. Um, so they're facing to the east for that reason. So this one's, everything looks good there. So number seven is the Athena Parthenos statue. Um, a very, very, very large um, struck or built uh, statue of Athena. Um, and it shows her standing fully armed, ready to go um, there. This room was a treasury room called the Apostatomos, but um, the artwork shows, and you can see um, here, the uh, frieze shows a Panathenaic procession. I'll show you that in a minute. But then the, um, the pediments, the pediments show, like this one here, shows the contest of Athena versus Poseidon for the city. And the east pediment shows the birth of Athena. And so this pediment here shows the um, contest between Athena and Poseidon for, um, for ownership of uh, Athens, or at least worship of Athens. What's cool is that this thing right here, that's the laser thing that cleans. So they're cleaning the freeze now that they've finished the, um, the caryactids. So they clean the freeze now, which is very cool. Um, but let's go ahead and just kind of circumambulate this area, walk around this area. Um, I'm going to stop on this guy because I think this guy is the one that has the stuff that frustrates me the most about the fact that we don't have these objects and that they're in another museum. Let me find it. Yes, 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 yes. All right. So what was great is that when I was there in 2019, they actually allowed photos up here. They didn't allow photos for the first couple of years. They now allow photos, which makes me incredibly happy and meant that I had to geek out for an entire day. So for my free day, while the students did, went other places, I went around here. Um, where is it? Sorry, 
Why can't I find these? Okay. Maybe, 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 maybe. Anytime. Sorry, I have lots of photos, obviously. Nope. Yep. Let's go here. Let's see. All right. Maybe. There we go. Oh, it's the other one. Okay. So on the other side, but you can see this kind of like frustration. If it looks chalky and white, it's a mold. It's not the original. Um, and so these are in the British Museum. Um, and you can go and see them there if you want to. But look at this. That's the hand. That's real. That's the original. So the hand of this charioteer, which is probably Selene, um, the hand of this charioteer is here. The rest of it is in London. Um, so very, very frustrating. The Nikkei statues on the temple itself, yes, um, are, well, so the Nikkei statues on that temple, on the temple of, sorry, I guess I don't understand the question. Um, but the uh, Nikkei statues on, oops, sorry. Yeah, the temple of Nikkei. So they are not there anymore. Um, but the ones that I showed you that are in the museum are the original. There's only, I think, I think Elgin only took like one um, small one away. But um, as far as the Metopes go, as far as the Metopes go, let's see here. The Metopes depict several things. Um, these are Metopes. They would have been up high and difficult to see. Um, but the Metopes depict um, the sack of Troy on the north side. Um, the, uh, what is the one on the east side? An Amazonomachy or a battle of, so this is the one on the north side. So this is showing Troy and the sack of Troy. Um, and then you can kind of see some of them here. Here is that frieze that depicts the Panathenaic procession, which is a procession of um, riders and cattle for sacrifice during the Panathenaic festival, which was every four years and dedicated to Athena. They would sacrifice over a hundred. Really? What, what, what just happened? Hold on, sorry. Oh, that was the end, really? Okay, that's the end. All right, well, we'll go to the um, cultural one. But what's the cool thing is, is that you see these here and then you look out and you see the Acropolis here. And so it's just a very fitting uh, representation. So what I'll do in the final 10 minutes is kind of go through the rest of my photos as opposed to going on like, you can also go on Google um, culture and see everything there as well, which now that I think of it, do I have that? Mm, yes, okay, so here. So Google Culture also has it, um, which is kind of nice to just be able to go around and look at everything, especially if you're an archaeologist and you're like, what is there and what isn't there? So this is, again, the, this is the uh, south side of the building, and it shows a centauromachy, a battle of centaurs. Um, and so that is there. But a lot of these, unfortunately, are in the... Uh, British Museum or missing entirely. Um, the reason they may be missing entirely like these is because this in the center area is where there was an explosion, unfortunately. Um, the, let's see here, here we go. In uh, 1687, there was an attack in Athens. The Venetians um, were fighting against the Turks for control of the city. And the Venetians attack Athens and threw a cannonball basically, fired a cannonball into the Parthenon. Unfortunately, the Turks were keeping ammunition in the Parthenon. And as a result, that ammunition uh, exploded 
and it resulted in a giant, and here is a picture of it, the um, Parthenon being destroyed. A big like cookie bite is taken out of the middle of it. And so it goes from a relatively okay shape to suddenly having the middle of it just blown out. And that is why we're missing big chunks of the, this area here. So appropriately, they made this the way to enter because they're like, we don't have anything here. It's all got blown to pieces um, as a result. So some really fascinating stuff um, up at the top, especially. I'm not kind of like highlight some of my other photos though. Any other questions as I'm going through these? Yeah, so here's a great representation of that. This is all a mold and then there's the actual real hand. Um, some great ones here of uh, a gigantomachy as well. You can see all the pollution and everything that will eventually probably get cleaned up. Um, but a lot of these were destroyed or defaced by Christians when the building was made into a church um, because they didn't want, so they knock off the faces as a way of preventing idolatry. Um, you can see here as well, these two horses are in the British Museum. These two are originals. Um, so frustrating stuff there. Oh, what else did I take photos of? Man, I really loved all of the metopes and you never get enough photos of those in my opinion, especially this one, Aphrodite attacking a giant. I love it. I love it. Uh, Aphrodite doesn't do a lot of fighting. So it's nice to see her getting in some action. Uh, yeah, so some really cool stuff. And it's cool how close you can get to all of this. They do have guards making sure that people don't like touch stuff. Um, but it's, it's absolutely fascinating just to walk around this museum. Um, and the great part is that it is open in the evenings as well um, on, I think, Thursday or maybe Wednesday evenings. And so that's when I actually bring my students um, because no one remembers that it's open until 10, 11, even midnight some nights. Um, and so we go at night so that we can see the very well lit Parthenon and look at some of these uh, beautiful sculptures as well that are there. So with that, I have five minutes left, but um, I hope you enjoyed this tour. Uh, if you have any questions, I would love to answer them. Feel free to unmute yourself. Um, hoping that I did this museum justice. It is um, very much, thank you, Dan. Uh, it is very much um, a testament to the fact that these need to be uh, the monuments in, or the sculptures in um, London should be returned to everyone else, to this great place. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I also hope that if you are a student at the University of Iowa, you will consider going on a study abroad tour with me um, eventually when it's safe. We're aiming for 2020, summer 2022, sorry, summer 2022. Um, that's the aim. And it will be a four week trip, uh, two weeks in Athens, one week in the mainlands and one week in the islands. So if you are interested, if you're a student at the University of Iowa, let me know. I would love to have you. So thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Dr. Chi.